All right, so y equals the square root of x. Again, we'll be able to answer these questions in a minute, but probably easier, safer, better to, uh, to do the table of values. So let's start at like, uh, I don't know, negative 3. And I hope that bothers you because what happens when we plug in negative 3? It's imaginary. So where does that go on the graph? Never. It doesn't. So it's like there, there's nothing there. I don't want to put an X there. There's in A. In A, I don't know what to put there. There is no answer. In A, no answer. Not available. Not available. <laughs> so usually what that means. Not applicable. Yes. Any of those things apply because you can't, well, you can't take the square root of negative 3, but you get imaginary. That doesn't show up on the graph. Okay. So this gets a little bit tedious. What happens with negative 2 and negative 1? Same thing. We can't do that. Okay. Now we're into like numbers we can handle. What's the square root of 0? Zero? 0. 0. All right. Let's start putting them on the graph. 0, 0. That's on the graph. <coughs> All right, if x is 1, y is 1, because the square root of 1 is 1. Uh, let's be smart about what we plug in next for x. We should throw a 4 in there. Why should we throw a 4 in there? Because that's a perfect square, and so it has a nice square root. That's a good way to say it. You can take the square root of 2, but you get a weird number, so let's avoid <coughs> that. Let's go with 4. So 4, 2. I am hearing requests for 9. I like that because the square root of 9 is 3. Okay, I think we've seen enough to <coughs> sketch a graph. <coughs> How does that relate to the graphs we were doing yesterday and the day before? It's half a parabola. Yeah, it's half a parabola. Um, a parabola. But it's like half the y squared. So the imaginaries. Uh, no, not the imaginaries. Um, the parabola would have been um, x equals y squared, or y squared equals x. That would be the. So how would I get from y squared equals x? You could square root both sides. What do you have to do when you square root both sides? just in general, not really plus here, or plus or minus. And the plus or minus is what would give you the other half. But if you put a plus or minus on there, it wouldn't be a function. So to keep it a function, <coughs> parent function, we only take the positive side. So we don't draw the other half. So we don't draw the other half. Okay, and that's a little bit tricky because that parabola, y squared equals x, that does have the other half, but it's not a function. The vertical line test. And if we want it to be a function, then we can't have the plus or minus. So we say, well, let's just throw out the minus, keep the plus. And so that's how the square root graph is related to the parabola graph. Similar, but the square root is a function and a sideways parabola is not a function. So a plus or minus square root is the same as a parabola sideways. Correct. Okay. Because if we put the square roots on, we'd have to put a plus or minus, and then we'd get the bottom half of a parabola. But the square root, we don't do that. Another way to say it, I don't have a fancy calculator up here, but the functions on your calculator, they have to give you one answer. You can't hit a, a function button on your calculator and have it give you two answers. So if I hit 9 and then I hit the square root button, I really don't want my calculator giving me two answers. So we've just decided that we'll take the positive of the answers, which is 3. Same thing here. The square root of x is going to be positive. Okay, now we can walk through those uh, properties over here, looking at my picture. Um, when I say walk through, I mean pull popsicle sticks for because I think we know what these, these things mean. So, Nick, how about the domain? Good. Um, do you want to include zero or not include zero? <coughs> include zero. Megan, how about the range? Zero to infinity. Uh, Alex, how about x-intercepts? 
the origin, so zero, zero, yep. Reese, y-intercepts, zero zero. zero, zero. Caroline, do you see any asymptotes? <laughs> asymptotes are where there's like um, a dotted line and we get closer and closer to the line. No. This is a this paper that we're using is like a standard format when we introduce new um, new functions <coughs> to, of like the things we could think through, and so not all of the things apply. So there are no asymptotes. Ryan, how about symmetry? No, no there isn't any symmetry. So a kind of a boring set of uh, information there. It's certainly nothing you would memorize because if you had the graph next to you, you could answer any of those questions pretty easily. Okay, let's start thinking through translations now. Um, actually, let's back up a second here. Let's think about our key points. They're sort of opposite of the uh, parabola key points, right? The parabola was 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. But since the square root <coughs> is sort of backwards of a parabola, it's 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3, because we're taking the square root of things. So that's the key set of points we'll want to graph. Um, <coughs> even when we have something like a translation, <coughs> y equals square root of x plus 3. <coughs> that's a really good question, and that is outside the the square root bar, square root house thing. <coughs> So what does the plus 3 do to the graph? It just moves it up. It moves it up 3. All the rules are the same. So in theory, once you know this parent function, you already know all the rules about shifting it around, stretching it. Like You know all the things. So now we're just going to practice applying what we know to our new function. <coughs> so yeah, up 3. So I think I'm going to go up three, and that's going to be sort of my new starting point. Sometimes we put a little, a little cross there, sort of my new origin. That's where I'll start from. I mean, we just it look the exact same as the parent function. Should Perfect. It, three, it'll look exactly the same. In fact, these aren't really ordered pairs so much as ordered directions. <coughs> so I, I can use those same set of points every time. I just have a different starting point. 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3, 16, 4, 25, 5, and so on. So yeah, the picture is the same. It's just been moved up 3. So handle the translation first. And by handling the translation, that means you can always use that set of points. Uh, what do you think the next translation is going to be? Probably left to right. right. How would we accomplish a left or right? <coughs> it's got to be under the square root. So let's go x minus 2. So that is right 2. Remember the x stuff is a little bit backwards. So right 2 <coughs> would put me right there. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm not doing a different set of points. I'm still using that same standard square root points. 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. I guess 9 is <coughs> one unit off the graph, but I can handle that. What do you know? It's still the same picture. It's just been moved to the right, too. Uh, what else do we do to graphs? So we've got the left-right shift, the up-down shift. We could, we could stretch them. We are going to flip them, but let's go one thing at a time here. Did you put a number? Yep, oh, I should have asked. But yes, you're right. Put a number out front. <coughs> so no left-right movement. So what do I do with that three out front? The same thing we used to do with three out front. When I'm looking at my table, how does that three affect my table? 
which set of numbers? The y's. Multiply the y's by 3, that'll stretch it out. So 0 times 3, that didn't do anything. But the rest, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9. <coughs> okay, so 0, 0, 1, 3, 4, 6, and 9, 9. So it's still got some, some curve to it, not a straight line. Stretched out square root. Just to make it a squished parabola if we did it the other way. Okay, well let's let's do everything all in one here. See how, how badly we can mess up a square root function. Negative two, you're reading my notes here. Negative two square root, you want to keep going? X plus four. Sure. I mean, that's not what I had written, but it'll work. I need to do one more thing if I want to throw all the things in there. I'm going to go minus 3. Um, wait, that's going to that's not going to work real well to go down 3 and flip it and stretch it. Let's, let's go plus 3. That way we'll be up, and when we flip it, we'll have room to work. Okay, so that's going to be... All right, so... Aaliyah, what's the? Tell me one of the things that's wrong with it. I'll just make it open ended for you here. Up three. Dontre, what else has been changed? Left four. Alan, what else did Ryan do to our function here? Flipped. And Karis, what's left? Took care of the three, the four, and the negative. What's the the vertical stretch? So yeah, if we can do this one, we can do any of them because this has all of the all of the problems, all of the issues. Uh, up three, left four. So there's our starting point. <coughs> up three, left four. I know it's going to be flipped. My points are usually 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. We said there's a vertical stretch. So, Ethan, how do I like accomplish that vertical stretch with those points? <coughs> what do I do with that 2 or negative 2? Yes, when you say multiply all the points by negative 2, do you mean the x's and the y's, or the x or the y's? Just the y's. Yeah, it's, it is going to look funky, because we got weird things going on. Be careful, 0, 0 now. Remember, that's from the new starting point. 1, negative 2, from the new starting point, not from the origin. 4, negative 4 from the new starting point. 9, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <coughs> okay, and I think I can see the, you know, the general shape of a square root uh, there that's been flipped and stretched. And again, with these, it's probably wise to go back and make sure that what you said would happen, you made happen. Because almost everybody gets this stuff right, and then it doesn't always make it to the graph. So up three, left four. Yes, it's been flipped, and it's been stretched. So another face left. Okay, what would make it face left? I don't think we have any that make it face left. That's a really good question. Um, what would make it face left? Do you know what would make it face left? We don't have any of those. So a negative out front flipped it up and down. A negative on the X inside would flip it left and right. 
that that's not going to happen for us. It makes it a little harder. It, they're harder to deal with, so usually we don't do them. But yes, the, a negative on that x plus 4, but it would have to be negative parentheses <coughs> x plus 4, like that. That would move it left 4. No, because if you had the right x in there, it wouldn't be imaginary. Right? If you had x equals negative 5, then you'd have negative, negative 1, and you'd be oh. back to good. So you're right, you still can't square it a negative number, but if x was negative, two negatives make a positive, you'd be okay. Great question. Side note, we, not, we don't flip it left and right. Okay, so the back, I don't know, we don't, I think this was just an extra page. We don't need that parent function uh, page because we're only doing square roots today, and we already did those. So this next um, worksheet, this is uh, part of today's assignment, but just the odds. Just the odds. So why don't you try number three? Or maybe we should work through it together. This is something maybe a little bit strange on number three. I put a fraction. Yeah. Kind of annoying. Jack, tell me one thing that... If, if we're going to graph number three, it's down, three. it's down three. Good. So they put the negative three in front. That's not usually where we put it, but it's still a minus three, so that's a down three. So, I mean, if it really bothers you, I mean, it'd have to really bother you for you to go through the trouble of doing this, but it's, it's the same thing as putting a minus three at the end. That's where we're used to seeing it. So again, if it, if it really bugs you, then rewrite it like that. Uh, Nicole, what else has gone wrong with our parent function here? Like the y values. Okay. That's a good way to say it. The y values are multiplied by a half. Y values times a half. What's the, uh, what's the fancy word that Nicole was avoiding there? What could she have said instead? They were squished. They were squished. That's not exactly the fancy word, but vertical. <laughs> Squish is fine, but compression is the, the fancier word. Oh, does it ask for that? Yep. State domain arrangement, but that's not hard. Once you have the picture, no big deal. So down <coughs> three, my new starting point. My usual points, one, one, four, two, nine, three. But, as Nicole said, we've got to multiply the y values by a half to, to accomplish the squish. So over 1, up a half, over 4, up 1, and over 9, which is just off the page, up 1 and a half. So yeah, that's definitely a squished square root there. Yep, we now need to find domain and range, but I bet Jackson can do domain for us. Uh, zero Let's see, domain is the x values, so zero to infinity. Logan, how about the range? What y values are covered? Uh, <coughs> Perfect, negative three to infinity. Number five. Well, then you'd have five y on the other side. You have to divide by five again. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah, you're gonna have to multiply the y coordinates by negative two fifths. That's gonna be annoying. Don't know what else to tell you. Why don't you try number five? It's so enticing to you. There's the answer to number five. Um, what did you say? You saw something from later that you think we should look at? <coughs> the odds are the only ones assigned, but look later in the, uh, the packet and give me one more to, to do. Something. 
Yeah, there's some inequalities later on. Of course, you'd pick one that's assigned, as you should. So let's look at 15. Um, so, Ellen, what's the what's been changed from the original to number 15? It's been changed. How is it? Um, it's an inequality. Okay. Which way? I was going to ask that later, but that's fine. Which way should we shade then? Above. So we'll get there in a minute, but before that, Cooper, how, how am I going to graph this? How is the graph going to look different than the original? Uh, it's all the y values multiplied by 2. So it's a, it's a vertical stretch. A vertical stretch uh, of 2. So yeah, we'll multiply the y values <coughs> by 2. Which one is it? What's counted as above? So we'll shade everything above, but let's first get the picture down here. So one, two. Oh, that's a really good question here. We're four, four, nine, six. Um, solid versus dashed. That's, we got it. Solid because the equal sign. Oh, I completely forgot about the solid dash. Well, on this one, if you forgot about solid dashed and you just did a solid line, it you'd be fine. Yep. Okay, now Ryan's question was a good one about, like, yeah, we know we're shading above. We're shading above the square root. Is anything over here in the second quadrant above the square root? No. no. Uh, another way to think of that is if you plug in x equals negative 4, you can't do that. So nothing over here is sort of eligible to be an answer. So only above where the graph is. <coughs> and domain and range don't really make much sense for that because it's, it's uh, yeah, that's more for graphs than for inequalities. <laughs> So if we just didn't put the domain and range on this one, you would not? I would be okay with that. Okay. I mean, so if you... Wouldn't the domain and range just be <coughs> For domain... Well, I mean range. Let's see. The x's would... I think it'd still be the same. Like, the x's that are covered are 0 to infinity, whether you're looking at the graph or the shading. I mean, I think the well, range, range would just be the same. The range would be the same. So we have to do it or not? I don't, because if it had been know. if it had been less than, then it would have been <coughs> different. a different range. The domain would have still been the same. So, yeah, I'm not sure what the technical correct answer is on that one. So I won't be asking that. Okay, let's take a few minutes. We still got more to do today, but rather than plow through it, let's just pause here and let you work on. Um, the odds of this worksheet.